I hate the skincare community. I hate the skincare industry. I hate the skincare niche. Let me just give you some context, okay? Now, I'm a content creator, obviously. And over the last six months, I made content related to skincare. I've gotten over 200,000 views, over 1,000 subs, and I appreciate you guys for that. However, being a content creator, it sort of puts you in a different position because you can read everyone's comments. You know, you can sort of understand how your audience thinks just from the way they comment on your videos, this and that. And reading people's comments and just being a skincare content creator, I sort of slightly changed the way I viewed the skincare industry. Now... Not completely, because I already didn't really mess with the skincare industry. I mean, a few months ago, I made a video exposing exposing the skincare industry. That was a few months ago. That video did pretty well. So I never really liked the skincare industry, but right now, I don't know why, but I just really am starting to hate it. And really, I think the reason for this is that I've started making videos, you know, my road to getting glass skin. You'll see that on YouTube Shorts, TikTok, or my Instagram Reels. I make videos on my journey to getting glass skin. And, you know, a lot of these comments are very supportive, which I really appreciate. It means a lot to me. But there's also those comments out there from these random people trying to suggest things that I really just don't understand. And what I mean is that there is so much BS advice when it comes to skincare. There is so much BS skincare advice, I'm telling you. Because there are just so many people out there that will tell you to do these minor things. And they'll say that these minor things will completely transform your skin. When it won't. And they just claim it does. Let me give you an example. Okay. Basically, let's say you're going to sleep, you know, you have your pillowcase, you know, you you roll in around in your bed, you know, your your skin might rub on your pillow a little bit. People claim that if you get a silk pillowcase, which is supposed to be smoother, that you won't break out from pillows anymore. Since when was a silk pillowcase ever going to completely free your skin of any breakouts? No, 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 that's just not how it works. There is not a significant difference between using a normal pillowcase and a silk pillowcase. Yet people on TikTok and Instagram Reels will tell you, oh, yo, go go get this silk pillowcase. It's going to completely transform your skin. It's going to save your acne. No, 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 it won't. It's just a bunch of BS. What is this advice? There's so much advice out there that it's just terrible. And there's another thing too where it's like, oh yeah, if you sleep on one side, you're more likely to get breakouts on that side. Okay, maybe slightly, maybe slightly. But in general, no. I mean, I sleep on my left side. But my left side is way clean. My bad. My left side is way better than my right side. Well, not way better, but like, you know, you know what I'm saying, right? The left side of my skin is clearer than my right side, even though I sleep on my left side. How does that work? Okay. Because people will just say these minor things. They'll say, okay, just sleep upright. Or not sleep upright, but sleep on your back so that your face doesn't, you know, make contact with the pillow and you won't break out. You don't got to change your sleeping posture just to completely get rid of breakouts. Because to be honest... Changing the way you sleep is not going to do anything, okay? Sorry, pal. What else is there? Okay, because I'm kind of, I'm trying to get deep. I'm trying to dig deep, okay? Because there's a lot of skincare advice out there that I just completely disagree with. And I'm just going to be breaking down all of that. All right. The next one is when people say that don't use a towel. Don't, don't, don't use a towel to dry your face. And okay, look. I, 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 sort of, I sort of agree with this one, right? I sort of agree. You know, you shouldn't be using a towel that you've, you know, just wiped your balls and butt and body with, you know? You shouldn't use that towel to dry your face. That's just disgusting. That's just very unsanitary. But 
if you just have a face towel and you wash it every one or two weeks, like it shouldn't be a big deal. Yet people will claim that, oh, using a towel that's bad for your skin and has some bacteria is just going to cause you to break out. No. What are you talking about? You think just pat drying a towel that's relatively clean is just going to cause a breakout? No. No, that doesn't make sense. What's another one? Oh, ice rolling. Oh, my. Ugh. You know, ice rolling is cool, right? Ice cooling, ice, ice rolling is cool for the short term, temporary. You know what I'm saying? It's cool. But people that say that, oh, yeah, ice rolling, it saved my skin. It cleared up my skin. I got glass skin from ice rolling. Yo. No. It's just BS. Okay. Ice rolling is just not going to get rid of your acne. Ice rolling does not get rid of acne. It, it doesn't. For a fact. 100%. You know, I don't get it. I don't get the appeal behind it. Like, yeah, sure, it's cool at getting rid of inflammation. But so does almost everything else. Aloe vera does it. Tea tree does it. Oh my god, there's so many things out there that gets rid of inflammation. So why, out of everything, should I ice my face? I'm just not going to ice my face. Because... For a lot of people, it actually makes their skin worse. Their skin gets irritated from having the ice on their face. Yet, what's the common what's the common factor? Those people that are promoting ice rolling are also promoting a product. Because at the end of the day, everyone's just trying to sell something, right? Uh, also, oil cleansing. Wow. Oil cleansing, in my opinion... Oil cleansing is probably one of the most overrated things in the skincare community because, yes, you know, from a, I guess, a scientific standpoint, yeah, you're going to remove the oils from your skin, you know, obviously, that's just how the oil cleanser works, but, like, come on, I don't think double cleansing is necessary at all. I don't think it's really necessary at all and a lot of people will claim it is now i'm not saying that double cleansing won't make a difference because there's actually a lot of people that double cleansing does make a difference but there are also people that just stand by double cleansing so much that they think that everyone should be double cleansing which i don't think everyone should be because i think that there's also a large percentage of people that double cleansing will make their skin worse because it's more irritating to the skin. So I guess it's not really worth it for some people, but it might be for others. But the general advice that people say is, yeah, go double cleanse. I disagree. Maybe if you if you wear makeup, sure, go ahead, double cleanse. But other than that, I don't think you really need to. Even if you wear sunscreen, I don't think double cleansing is completely necessary. Now, there's nothing wrong with going out and trying double cleansing. And if it makes a big difference, then stick to it. But you shouldn't feel pressured by the skincare community to go out and double cleanse. And I actually feel that pressure too because a lot of people advise me to go and do that. But I just don't want to. All right, I think that's really it when it comes to, you know, those nitpicky skincare advice. Those small things that are really just... Uh, I have hatred for. There's also, when it comes to the skincare industry, there's a lot of products that will not do anything, okay? And the reason for this is that, first off, you're buying these products over the counter. You can't expect these products to make a massive difference. I mean, nine times out of ten, go to a dermatologist, they'll give you something way better than any $200 skincare product can get you. Because a lot of those products that you get over the counter that are super expensive, they don't do anything. They don't make a difference at all. Matter of fact, if you have moderate to severe acne, it's pretty likely that nothing over the counter is actually gonna help you. Odds are you're gonna have to end up getting tretinoin, adapalene, or maybe even Accutane. Or you, may, you might also have to get an antibiotic. But that's besides the point. I'm basically just saying that a lot of these times, like, it's just better to save your money from 
buying don't buy those two hundred dollar skincare products just go to a dermatologist in the long run it's actually gonna probably be cheaper for you and your skin is just gonna look so much better if you go to a dermatologist that's just that's just the truth because really those skincare products they don't do anything they because they're being sold over the counter you can't really get a high enough concentration in those products and also because it's being over because it's being sold over the counter because it's being sold over the counter those products can be tailored to a specific person right because they're selling it to the general public and so you know those people that say oh, okay go buy everyone needs to buy this specific toner people that say that man you on some bs because that specific toner doesn't work for everyone you know that's why you go to a dermatologist because those dermatologists will tailor your needs, get a product specific to you, and that product will do wonders for you nine times out of ten. And also, a lot of these products, they all do the same thing too, okay? I feel like, oh, especially with cleansers, especially with cleansers and probably even moisturizers too, a lot of these skincare products, they all do the same exact thing. There's not a significant difference between these different brands. For example, let's compare CeraVe and Cetaphil. Wanna, let's get both of their hydrating cleansers from CeraVe and Cetaphil. If you compare the two side by side, I mean, nine times out of ten, it's not going to make a massive difference for you because they just do the same stuff. They do the same thing. Really, at the end of the day, the better product is going to be the product that barely does anything to the skin. And the reason for that is it's better to have a product that isn't super irritating to the skin. So the products that are the best are the products that don't do anything. Really. That's just how I feel, to be honest. And yeah, like, are you going to get a better cleanse from using a CeraVe hydrating cleanser versus a Cetaphil hydrating gentle cleanser? Nah. <laughs> To be honest, no, you're really you're really not unless one of those brands have a product or an ingredient that you're allergic to. But other than that, you're not going to get a better cleanse just from those two cleansers because they're dang near the same thing. Same thing with moisturizers. These moisturizers are almost all identical. Just get a moisturizer for your skin type and you should be good. Okay? If your skin isn't getting irritated, you should be good. That's just how skincare, your skincare routine should be built around. Getting products for your skin type and that will also not cause your skin to get worse. And finally, what I'm going to be talking about is the lies. There are so many lies out there. There are so many lies out there in the skincare industry, the skincare community. I already touched on this in my other video when I exposed the skincare industry, but basically... There are so many content creators out there that will absolutely glaze a product. They'll be like, oh yeah, this this serum right here, this niacinamide serum completely transformed my skin. It got rid of all my acne, hyperpigmentation, acne scars, wrinkles, fine lines, all of that. But come on, man. <laughs> no, like they'll have severe acne beforehand and then say that the niacinamide serum just completely got rid of it all. Come on now, that's not possible. That's just impossible, okay? Odds are they got a retinoid. And they're just lying to you. And the reason they're lying to you is because they're trying to sell that my serum to you. They're trying to make some money off you. They're trying to basically scam you at the end of the day. Now, you guys might be saying, but, yo, but Choice, don't you have a brand deal with Banish? The, the difference is I don't be lying. Like, I don't be lying about Banish. Like, I actually mess with the products that I say. Like, go to my skincare product review for Banish. I actually mess with those products. Like, I don't even make claims that those Banish products completely transform my skin. No, I never said that. I said that they actually did pretty well for my skin. But really, at the end of the day, what made the big difference for my skin was using Tretinoin. That's what I've been saying since day one. I never said that Banish completely transformed and saved my skin. So no, I'm not being a hypocrite. But those people on TikTok, oh nah, they go crazy. They're like, oh yeah, this vitamin C serum, this niacinamide serum cleared up everything for me. 
but they're all cap. They're all liars. They're just trying to make some money off you. They're trying to get some bank off you. Oh, can we talk about the can we talk about the T Shanley too? Like Ah uh, nah. Let's not let's not talk about T Shanley. I maybe I'm trying to get a sponsorship from them in the future, but yeah. A lot of these skincare content creators that you guys look up to and follow, a lot of them are just lying because they're either sponsored or they make a cut off of you. Now, do I have anything else? I don't think I do. Oh, also, actually, no, I do. Okay, look. Something that really is just personal to me is that I've noticed I've become a... I've become a slight bit more insecure when it comes to my skin. A little bit more. And the reason for this is that I'm in front of the camera. You know, I don't know how many I don't know how many views this video is gonna have. Like it could have like five views. It could have have like 2,000, 10,000 views. And so because of that, I feel I sort of feel like a pressure that my skin always has to look nice and smooth and clear when I'm in front of the camera. Because I'm a skincare content creator. Like, of course I gotta look good. But that actually has kind of messed me up. You know, being a skincare content creator, it sort of has made me a bit, you know, a bit more insecure about my skin because I always feel this pressure to look good, you know, have my clear skin so I can set the standard on my channel. And that's just that's just not how that's just not how things work, you know, because your skin's not gonna be perfect all the time. Especially for me. Like my skin is not perfect all the time. So the reason this is bad is sometimes I might feel like, oh, I don't want to record a video until my skin clears up and I'll push off videos, which is just not good because, I mean, I'm letting my skin dictate my actions. Come on now. And that's sort of the reason why I made that series of my road to getting glass skin, because I wanted to show you guys that I don't have perfect skin. You know, I'll always try to strive for it, but at the end of the day, can't control your skin completely and so that's why i don't have glass skin right now but yeah i guess being exposed to tiktok instagram youtube just social media in general i've seen i'm i'm seeing other people other content creators that have flawless skin glass skin perfect beautiful skin like they have you know they're basically blessed and i just compare myself to them and i'm like okay I'm also like them. I'm a I'm a content creator, so I need to up my standard by having glass skin, having clear skin when I upload my videos, but that's just not realistic. Anyways, I hope you guys like that yap session. I don't know how long this video is going to be. Appreciate you guys. Follow my Instagram at choice.yc and peace.